As we continue to navigate through this pandemic, I want you to know that we are doing everything we can to ensure your safety so that we can continue to build critical infrastructure for our clients and communities. I want to thank you for everything that you're doing to help keep our job sites and offices safe places to work. To help stop the spread of COVID-19, please follow these protocols. Antes de venir a trabajar, se recomienda revisar su temperatura y evaluar cómo se siente. Todas las personas también serán examinadas al lugar de trabajo. Usted debe quedarse en casa si tiene fiebre superior a 99.6 grados, 37.8 Celsius, tos persistente, una enfermedad respiratoria aguda o nueva que causa dificultad para respirar, o si ha estado en contacto con alguien que tiene estos síntomas. Si cumple con cualquiera de estas condiciones o si se siente enfermo durante su turno, deje de trabajar y póngase en contacto con su supervisor lo más pronto posible. En el sitio de trabajo, como en público, es importante practicar el distanciamiento social. Eso significa mantener una distancia de seis pies mínimo en todo momento siempre y cuando sea posible. Esto va especialmente para reuniones. Si tienen una reunión en persona, reúnase fuera o en un área bien ventilada si es posible. Limite su número a 10 personas o menos. Se recomiendan cubiertas faciales. Incluya solo a las personas esenciales. Limite el espacio entre cada persona a 6 pies y no compartir comida. Para las áreas para comer, baños y estaciones de lavamanos, Mantenga el espacio adecuado. Si un área no permite espacio de seis pies entre personas, se considera la posibilidad de crear turnos rotativos. Evite el contacto físico. Consulte el documento de orientación de vehículo para obtener recomendaciones de vehículos compartidos. De acuerdo con las pautas de los CDC, Estamos exigiendo a los empleados que mantengan máscaras faciales en su persona y que usen máscaras faciales cuando trabajen a menos de seis pies el uno del otro. También es esencial lavarse bien las manos durante al menos 20 segundos. Antes y después de usar el baño, antes y después de preparar o comer comida, después de sonarse la nariz, toser o estornudar, o después de cualquier tipo de superficie u objeto contaminado. Si no puedes lavarte las manos, usa el desinfectante de manos como alternativa. Si estornuda o tose, use un pañuelo o un codo. Haga todo lo posible para evitar tocarse la cara. Como se aplica a su papel y lugar de trabajo, limpie y desinfecte superficies de alto contacto, cocinas y áreas de café, agua, baños, perrillas y asas, rieles de escalera y otras barandillas, herramientas de mano y herramientas eléctricas compartidas, cualquier otro equipo como generadores, arándelas a presión o oxiacetileno. Otras áreas incluyen cabinas de vehículos, manívelas de puertas, perillas de radio, etc. Estaciones de lavado, teléfonos y teclados. Si se cree que alguien en su oficina o proyecto ha estado expuesto a COVID-19, esa ubicación debe seguir un proceso especial de limpieza profunda o de contaminación viral. Póngase en contacto con el director del proyecto inmediatamente sobre la exposición potencial. Buenos son muchas cosas que recordar. Si tiene preguntas relacionadas con el plan de respuesta COVID-19, de Sant o el protocolo de la empresa, hable con su supervisor del proyecto o visite la página en la pantalla. Para asuntos urgentes relacionados con COVID-19, comuníquese con su gerente, llame a la línea directa de Sant COVID-19 al 480-293-3255 o envíe un correo electrónico a crisisatsant.com. Please be sure to follow these protocols. These are very unusual circumstances we're working under. We need everyone to do their part to 
to help maintain a clean and safe workplace. Thank you for your efforts and thank you for everything that you do. All sun projects require hard hat, safety glasses, high visibility clothing or vest, and sturdy work boots as a minimum level of personal protective equipment for everyone on site. Additional task specific PPE may be required by your task and will be addressed in the task hazard analysis. Delivery drivers and all visitors to the site must also comply with these PPE requirements. There are a few things that you will need to do every day on this project to ensure that you've planned your work in a safe manner, inspected the equipment that you'll be using to get the job done, and that you have inspected your work area to make sure that it's safe before you start working. Equipment pre-operation checklists will be needed to be completed and turned in for each piece of mobile equipment being operated that day. Checklists that document the inspections of trenches or excavations and scaffolding will be completed by a competent person and submitted prior to starting work and as needed throughout the ship. Also, if your task involves any confined space or hot work, a permit for those activities will need to be submitted. In addition to the daily safety activities, there are some things that we do weekly to keep a focus on the safety and to share with everyone on site the activities that will be taking place and to discuss the potential hazards or other safety observations. SUNT All Hand Safety Meeting is held weekly at a time and a place that the project team will give you. All are required to attend and all should participate. In addition to the SUNT-led safety meeting, each contractor on site is required to hold a safety meeting with their crew to go over the hazards associated with their activities. The progressive discipline policy on a SUNT project is simple. Know the rules and abide by them. The purpose of this orientation is to familiarize you with the rules of the project. It's up to you to ask questions if you need clarification. This orientation is considered the first notification in a progressive discipline policy. If you are found in violation of any safety rule, you may receive a written warning if it's not of a nature that would endanger your life or present an immediate threat to yourself or someone else. Any serious safety violation will result in immediate removal from this project. A subsequent safety violation or one that is serious in nature will result in your removal from this project. If your work area presents potential hazards to others working around you, ensure that you have proper barriers, warning signs, and or spotters to warn others. Chemicals and products used in your task can present a hazard. A daily review of the safety data sheets and THA associated with your task will help you to identify these hazards and plan accordingly. Make sure you're prepared to handle a chemical spill and should one occur, notify SUNT immediately. All work on energized equipment, vehicles, or tools must follow established lockout tagout procedures. This applies to all stored energy, including gravity, compressed air, gases, and spring tension, to name a few. Fuel must be transported and stored in the appropriate containers, like the ones shown. The use of plastic or any other non approved container is not allowed on this project. Fire extinguishers must be within 20 feet of hot work being performed or mounted within 20 feet of any petroleum powered equipment or tool. Fire extinguishers must have documented monthly inspections on the tag, not be expired and in good working condition. A hot work permit is required for all heat, spark or flame generating activities. Designate a fire watch to monitor hot work activity during and up to 30 minutes after the task is complete. Keep oxygen and acetylene tanks separated by an approved firewall or 25 feet and stored securely during transportation and storage. Falls continue to be the leading cause of death and serious injury in our industry. It's important to identify all fall exposures daily with the use of the THA and to write a fall protection plan specific to your task. Any work performed at a height of six feet or higher or use of a boom lift requires 100% tie off 100% of the time. Mid rail chain is required in all scissor lifts. Follow the manufacturer's instructions or other requirements for fall protection. A competent person must plan for the appropriate anchorage systems and personal fall arrest systems 
and these should be inspected prior to each use. All floor holes, deck penetrations, manholes, and roof openings greater than two inches must be covered and marked as opening, do not remove. Covers must be secured from movement and maintained by the trade that created the hazard. Maintain guardrails in safe condition. Do not remove without permission from sunt supervision. If a guardrail is broken, unsecured, or damaged, notify the supervisor or sunt supervision immediately or correct it if safe to do so. Danger flagging is only to be used for danger to life or limb. Signs must be attached stating the reason for the flagging and a number to call for entry. Only authorized employees completing the work can be inside the danger flagging. No other employees are allowed to cross the danger tape without permission. Caution flagging can be used and crossed by other employees when a hazard can be seen and avoided. Signs must be attached stating the reason for the flagging and the number to call for information. Flagging for use as a controlled access zone must be installed a minimum of six feet back from the fall hazard. In order for safety barricades and danger or caution flagging to be used correctly, it must be installed correctly, maintained, and immediately removed when the hazard no longer exists. Ladders can be useful tools when used for their intended purpose. When used incorrectly, they are the leading cause of falls and serious injuries. When writing your THA, always ask, is the ladder the best tool for this job? Can I do my work safely from a ladder? How will I get materials and tools up and down? Make sure the ladder is inspected for damaged or missing components and that all of the manufacturer's labels are in readable condition. Make sure that you set up and use the ladder per the manufacturer's instructions and that it is secured. Never stand on the top or the next rung down on a step ladder. Scaffold must be inspected before each use by each trade using the scaffold. Inspections must be documented and turned into sunt. Scaffold required proper tagging to inform employees that a scaffold is safe or unsafe to use. Red tag means stop. Green tag means go. All employees must be properly trained before using scaffold. Training documentation must be available. Prior to digging any excavation or trench, an excavation plan must be submitted to Sunt Supervision, detailing the length and depth of the trench, any unique considerations or encumbrances, and the sloping, benching, or shoring, or other methods that will be used to protect workers while in the excavation. Excavation inspections must be performed daily before allowing employees to enter a trench, and when weather or other outside factors affect the safety of employees inside the trench. Ladders or ramps or other means of safe access are required in all trenches and excavations. Ladders must be secured from movement. Safe access must be provided for crossing over excavations. Design will vary based on the depth or width of the excavation. Planking and bridging are typically acceptable methods. Electricity is everywhere on our projects, and so are the hazards associated with it. Ground Fault Circuit Interruption Protection, or GFCI, is required on all outlets, including generators and house power. All generators must be grounded. Ensure that adequate lighting is present to perform the task. Headlamps might work well for what's in front of you, Well, what about moving around the area that you're working in? Take the necessary actions to protect the extension cords from damage, from traffic, equipment, and people. Never run over a cord with a piece of equipment, and be careful of sharp edges that may damage the insulation. Any extension cord found to be defective, such as ground missing or the insulation cut, will be removed from service and physically tagged out of service. Roll up all electric cords daily and inspect for damage as you do so. Only power cords used for charging equipment, 
will be left out overnight. Those cords will be neatly rolled up next to the equipment that they're charging. Confined space operations will be identified in the THA. Make sure that the proper permits have been applied for and approved before beginning any work and that air monitoring or ventilation have been addressed. Ensure that employees entering a confined space have been properly trained and that everyone involved has been trained and is knowledgeable of the rescue plan. It is important to conduct a workplace inspection prior to the start of every shift. Constantly monitor the THA and notify all personnel of any changes to the conditions of the workplace and any potential hazard that may have arisen as the result of this change. You should perform a 360 degree walk around inspection of each piece of equipment before use. Things can change in even a few minutes. Only designated personnel are allowed to operate equipment. Operators names must be submitted to the Sunt project supervision and approved prior to them operating equipment. Then complete the proper inspection forms for the equipment being used and submit a copy to Sunt daily. Ensure that all parts of the equipment are functioning properly before using the equipment, such as lights, horns, and backup alarms. All equipment or vehicles incorporating a gas or diesel engine must have a fire extinguisher mounted on board or within the working area. Wear seat belts at all times and obey the job site speed limits. Here are some additional project specific do's and don'ts that are important for you to know. Report any unsafe or unsanitary condition immediately to your supervisor or to a son supervisor. No children or animals will be allowed on site. Do not come to work ill or fatigued. There is no dry cutting allowed of cement containing products. Any dust generating activity such as sweeping, chipping, grinding must use engineering controls such as HEPA vacuums or wet methods to contain the dust. All grinding operations require goggles or spoggles in addition to a face shield. No loose or frayed clothing, sweatpants, shorts, or badly worn shoes. Shirts must have sleeves. A third party crane inspection is required on all cranes used on this project. Only non-conductive ladders will be allowed on this site and all ladders must be used per manufacturer's instruction. Anyone improperly using portable restrooms or writing graffiti anywhere on the job site will be removed from the site. Know where fire extinguishers and first aid kits are located. Know your company's heat illness prevention plan and practice it. I know it seems like a lot, but we've just covered the basics in this code of safe work practices. Now it's up to you to plan and execute your work in a safe manner. Remember, it's safety by choice for yourself, your family, and your coworkers.